Awesome Treasures Foundation is a faith-based philanthropy established in 1999. Friends of Awesome Treasures Foundation form a strong tribe, passionately committed to our mandate to raise transformational leaders for peace and advancement. Kingdom kings and priests sent to every mountain of influence. 70% of us hold postgraduate degrees and approximately 7% have a PhD. For context, this is seven times the global average of PhDs per capita. Over the last 24 years, Awesome Treasures Foundation has held initiatives impacting millions of people, including several summits, a syndicated radio broadcast and podcast, and 10 summer camps for inner city children. Here is a glimpse into a typical story from our summer camps. Our summer camp prepares our young charges for leadership, focusing on literacy and numeracy, entrepreneurial skills, and the total child. We make sure the children are fed during the camp. Some even have to take food home to their families. Our camp volunteers are dedicated. They get to know each one of the 120 children personally. And this is how we discovered that one of our young charges lived on the streets of Lagos with a mother who was suffering from a debilitating mental illness. They were fed by the charity of the community. Who brushes your teeth for you? No, I don't have brush. Which soap do you use to bath? I don't bath it, so it's almost amazing. Almost. And so we met with the community leader who revealed that this young girl was raped at the age of six by a man that had three wives and 13 children. Leaders of the community swung into action and ensured that he was prosecuted and has since been incarcerated for 25 years. It was precisely because of incidents like this that Mrs. Adenowa got so passionate about getting this girl off the streets. We immediately swung into action to ensure that help could reach them following due process and protocol. At a stakeholders meeting, with the mother and the community leaders present, consent was given to provide a safe home in a government-approved childcare center with a full scholarship for her. The streets closed off, she looks out of the window at the demolished ghetto she used to call home. She would love to be a doctor, she says. Thank you, auntie. See you soon. Doctor. Her story is just beginning, and as awesome treasures, we are in this for the long haul. Hey girl, how are you doing today? Bye. Did you go to school today? Yeah. I can't see. What did you learn in school today? I learned to rhyme. So to recite every sweet? Yeah. Okay, can you recite that for me? Okay, yeah, let's go. Eh. <laughs> I can see a lady so so fast. So, do you have a favorite poem? Oh, can you recite it for me? I am a butterfly sitting on the flower. Let me worry for a week. Run away! This is what the Awesome Tribe is all about transforming people who will in turn bring transformation to our world one life at a time. We have a quick presentation. Joining me, I'm going to have the head of missions all the way from Nigeria, Adetola Akinola, join me. I'm going to have the chairperson from the UK join me for this presentation. Can you clap for Dr. Ayo? Usually, every year, when we go for a summit from one location to the other, we celebrate the volunteers who have been exemplary. Is that good? 
because we can be in every nation ourselves. So it, there are the people who actually do the work. There's an excellent team that has put this all together. We're going to be giving this award to a volunteer who has been faithful for years. Through all sorts of challenges, she has remained steadfast. Until we show her love, she will soon guess who she is. But I know she came in again this morning off a train. I'm talking about Dr. Shiondro Jaye. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to honor some exceptional members of our awesome tribe. The award for UK Volunteer of the Year goes to Shale Durajai. I know everybody's always surprised because you see, it's the people who work the hardest who do it for no reason at all, but for the love of God. Do you see? So, Dr. Ayo will be presenting, and uh, this all about the way is the volunteer of the year, Nigeria 2023. That's why we have her here. She's your senior in medical school. Do it with due respect. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Mrs. Ayo said it all. We, we, are, we love you and we recognize your diligence. May God reward you, bless you, and keep you. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. Um, thank you very much. This is a huge surprise. Um, and I'll just like to encourage everyone who's here today. Um, you see, God is a reward of those that seek him. He will not disappoint you. Um, awesome Treasures Foundation is fertile ground. It's a lovely place to serve. Um, if you have been thinking about it, Go right in, okay, don't really dally. Just, it's a wonderful place, it's a wonderful tribe, it's a wonderful family. Thank you, Mrs. A, we have an awesome role model in you, an example in you. Thank you, everybody. I know she came in from Newcastle. I don't know, maybe yesterday. I know she just changed nannies, and she's here. You see, we have a very devoted set of people committed globally who jump through all kinds of hoops. So you want to tell a little about the story of last year you were determined, or not? Go ahead. You can I was telling Mrs. A last week that I had a testimony. So last year was a very tricky year. Um, I was serving in the partnership team, and we were meant to get in on Friday. Uh, my daughter had been ill for a few days. So the Tuesday before the summit, she developed fever. She was coughing. She had rapid breathing, low oxygen levels. And she was admitted into hospital, started an antibiotics, x-ray, oxygen, all the works. Um, usually when she becomes ill like that, it might take a while, you know, a week or two in hospital. But we just prayed and believed God. And I was telling Ayo that ah, I'm not really sure how people to make it, but we'll just hold up. Um, and miraculously on Friday, she was discharged um, about 12 without oxygen. <laughs> She was well, um, and then we left the hospital about 4 p.m. We got home, and I told the nanny, you know what, I really need to be in London. The plan had been to come on Friday and leave on Sunday, but obviously the nanny was a bit apprehensive. She was like, ah, are you sure? I was like, don't worry, I'll go first thing on Saturday morning, I'll be back on Saturday night. So I cancelled my train, I got a plane ticket instead, left the first flight from Newcastle, got here. Um, served in my unit. At the end, Miss A just prayed for me. She just called me and she just prayed for me. She just prayed for grace. You know when, you're, when people pray for grace, they're not praying for miracles, they're like grace. I'm like, ah, God. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, and, you know, I went back to Newcastle that night and to the glory of God, that's been the last time my daughter has been admitted for anything. I was saying to Mrs. A, it's exactly one year. I texted her on Tuesday morning. I said, it's exactly one year since we were rushed at the back, uh, since we went into a hospital for a &E. And in my one year, all because I knew where God was, um, in terms of wanted me to be, I came in spite of the challenges. And no, we haven't been in. She's been well, no x-rays, no oxygen, nothing. God is indeed faithful. Sorry, the context she has not given is that I, we cannot count how many times she had been admitted before then. You know, doctors don't know how to give testimonies. <laughs> if we bring out the photos, they were clients in the hospital. Sometimes you take the oxygen tank home. Because there was a history to the birth. 
and then since then, for no reason, it just stopped. Because it would not be an awesome treasure's testimony if a child was discharged from hospital. Before on call, will they not be discharged? I mean, this is not the place for those kind of testimonies. You know, yeah, we're not deriding any testimonies. But the testimonies you hear here, your ears tingle. I remember Pastor Agu turning to me and said, okay, what kind of testimonies are these? Because they're not normal, do you get? So the thing is that the child who was born at 22 weeks, was it even 22? 24. When I went to visit them, they said, well, the babies are there. I said, where? <laughs> because I couldn't, I didn't know. So when she says they look like a Coke bottle, I said, why are you lying? It was like an iPhone. <laughs> no, I'm sure. Because I kept looking where? And there, I was like, nothing prepared me for the shock. I just said, you know what? We're going to go for a celebratory dinner because you had a baby. You know how you have twins that are 24 weeks and you can hardly celebrate? Oh, we're going to celebrate because you had children. And God has proven that she had children. Well, that was the hardest Thai fusion meal of my life. <laughs> Why did let her know? The Servant Leader of the Year Award goes to Ayo Apoluari. drop our award <laughs> that we carried destroying the ozone layer all the way from Lagos creating climate change you know <laughs> okay <laughs> because you deserve it tissue I'm so speechless. I'm so it speechless. Cry, I'm so sorry. I have no words. I have no words. Um, I didn't see this coming. She'll gather herself later because we keep to time. <laughs> But it happens a lot in ATF because, like I said, those who give the most don't even realize they're giving. Their time, their energy. There was a year Dr. Ayo was working hard here. It was later I heard the kind of day she had before. It's the kind of day that she shouldn't just have shown up. She should have been too sad to show up. But she left everything aside and focused on not her emotions, but on the summit. Today, Idowua just said turns 40. Are you here from Dallas? Idowua now. You don't know you're 40 again, you Sorry, sorry. People bring out the local nature in me. You know, I'm trying that whatever, but when they believe, behave as if they don't know they're 40, or their husbands behave as if they don't know that we're going to call them to stand by their wives, and then they drop the cake and walk off, we begin to have these issues. So, Idowu, can you come forward, please? You're 40. Today, not tomorrow. Voila, <laughs> enjoy your lawfully wedded wife. And they decided that they were coming from Dallas because there's no other place, no better place to spend a 40th birthday than where they know is a platform of encounter. Oh, let her hold the knife. Can you do they to you? Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Would you have a few words to say? Um, I'm in shock, but I want to say thank you. Thank you, awesome trip. Yes, yes. 
These are people of love. I've never felt so much love in my life. And I am totally grateful. I am grateful to God. Um, thank you. I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Thank you for singing. Maybe you want to join them. Okay. Okay. So we have a little see us. We're going on time. We have a little gift, which interestingly came from America. <laughs> Miami. <laughs> and we hope you love it. We hope you love it. Okay. I think we're just gonna have like a joint cake something because Dr. I, you're too turned 40. That's your cake. In July, didn't you turn 40? Ah. Clap for a chair person who turned 40. There is cake. Don't go home without cake. Let's move it. We have a gift for you, Dr. Ayo. Don't worry, I'm sure you will like it because we te I tested that you liked it. And it's your own, it's not my own. But you like mine. So this is yours. <laughs> okay. I like the cakes, right? Okay. Ibene, we are going to take over soon. Keep us on track. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ayo. Happy birthday to you. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord open an extraordinary, astonishing season of favor for you, of wisdom. May you grow in wisdom, in favor, in stature, before God and man. This year that you have both entered into your 41st year on earth, may the desires of your heart come to pass. May the desires of your heart come to pass. The Bible says our hope deferred makes the heart sick may the desires of your heart come to pass may your joy be full to overflowing in jesus mighty name we recognize the fact that what sets us apart is that god in his mercy has chosen to tabernacle with us in also treasures foundation and so testimony testimonies are in essence one to give glory to god two an invitation to the one who's done it before to come do it again. Because if he's done it for Mr. A, he's more than able to do it for Mr. B. And then three, for us to learn what others did or did not do that brought them to the point of testifying, to the, that brought them to the point of the arrest, that brought them to the point where we're trusting God even for ourselves. So how do we choose just six testimonies. I mean, we're aware that we already have two published books, over four, and the third on the way, by the way, over 400 documented testimonies. So, amongst the lot, are we able to choose just six for this summit? It is those six testimonies that have direct lessons to either the theme of that summit or what the summit is about, and then that best exemplify what God has said he will do at that summit. I'm so grateful to God for what God has used this ministry to do in my life. I've, since I came in contact with architect Adenowo, I've been greatly impacted. In the year 2011, the Lord told me uh, he was going to visit me and yet give me a son. I jumped at the prophecy and I was running with it and working with it. But after a few years, I felt Nothing was happening and I was almost giving up. And I remember that when I came in contact with Mrs. Adinowo, I mentioned it to her and she smiled and she said, God will do that which he has said in your life, that I shouldn't worry and um, I should not be anxious for anything. And along the line, I joined Awesome Treasure Foundation as a volunteer. I initially, I didn't take it that serious. I was just coming. 
But in 2020, during COVID, I told myself that it was time for me to sit up and really, really serve God. I had that very strong conviction in me. And I remember I one day I just called her and I said, Ma, I want to serve you. See me beyond being a friend. And she laughed and I said, I'm serious. I want to be committed. And from that time, I committed to praying, praying for her, praying for the ministry. And I'm so, so grateful because God indeed is a rewarder. And uh, remember I said, God told me in 2011, so 2020, uh, the Lord visited me and I got pregnant with Yano Lua. Mr. Adenowo was excited. I shared the news with her. But because of my age, and one of the things the Lord had told me was that Yano's birth was going to be a miracle. And it was going to be different from my other children. My last baby, as at then, was 11 years old, going to 12. Mr. Adenowo was always praying with me. And towards the, my delivery period, I wasn't so sure because of my age, I was going to 50, I was pregnant, I'm a bit on the big side, so there were a lot of eyes on me because it was a high-risk pregnancy. And on the 3rd of March 2021, I checked into the hospital, everything was alright until a certain moment I was already in the theatre and the whole thing just changed. And, um, I just noticed I couldn't breathe properly and uh, right there on the operating table I began to speak in tongues I was praying I was crying that was all I could remember until I woke up hours after I asked where my baby was I noticed that people paused they couldn't really talk to me I called Mrs. Adeno I told her that I delivered but um, I wasn't sure what was going on and that then later my sister now told me that the baby was in ICU. I thought it was just a minor thing. The following morning, I went back to the ICU and I saw my baby. Consultant told me that it was brought out of me dead. Iyanu was brought out dead because I went into coding for over 30 minutes. They were trying to resuscitate me. The doctor told me and I quote him, he said, um, he had no pulse, he had no heartbeats, but his heart was good. So they kept on. And I know that it, it was God that kept them on. Because medically, normally, this, I was told that after about five minutes, if they try to resuscitate a baby and it doesn't come back, that is it. But they were on the Yano for close to 30 minutes. And the doctor said when they saw a ray of hope, they quickly packaged him and took him into ICU. Then began the journey of the intensive care unit at the South Surrey Medical Hospital in Canada. I called Mrs. Adenowo. I sent her pictures and she began to pray with me. I was told it's a 50-50 chance. So the wait began. We started praying. I was trusting God. I would hold his hands. I would speak the scriptures to him. On his third day, the 6th of March, he had a seizure, which made it worse. So they told me if he came out of ICU, he was going to be either brain dead or an imbecile. But I remember all New York of that year, we were still in ICU. I was very desperate. In fact, I cried from the beginning of the program through to the end, and I kept on asking God to honor his word in the life of Iyanu Lua. While Mrs. Adenor was preaching, she said something about when you are in the heat of the battle, that's the time to raise an altar. So I knew that word was for me because I was really desperate that day that something must happen. And Iyanu was scheduled for an MRI in the morning. I quickly went into my account and everything I had there, I just, it wasn't much. But I was desperate. So I just forwarded it while she was still ministering. I remembered immediately I saw the seed. I had peace, but I was still afraid. And uh, the following morning, they took him for the MRI. But I held on to God. About three or four days later, the doctors came back with a report that, uh, and I quote, that there is nothing significantly damaged. I just want to appreciate God 
because he is a faithful God. He's indeed a rewarder. I don't know what I have done, but this is really a wonder. The God who brought a dead baby out of a dead woman. And today, to the glory of God, we are both alive. Iyanu is well. We have gone back for a follow-up. We've had an MRI. Even the consultant, they are still marveled. The consultant kept asking, you mean he can walk? You mean he can jump? He can climb? He can do things on his own? And I said, yes. Iyanu is such an agile boy. His name is Iyanu, which means miracle. I'm certain that he who has begun the good work will certainly perfect it in Jesus' name. Why I like testimonies being said properly is to help you. So Dr. Ayo is a pediatrician. I would like her to give us like three minutes context of the testimony. What she didn't realize, she said she coded, which meant her heart stopped, her pulse stopped for 30 minutes. So she herself went. So the next day, they were surprised that she could walk at all. <laughs> and then I remember when she sent me that video that I could hear, K -k 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 I'm Nigerian, allow me to use my mouth to do, you know, K -k 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 behind, and I was like, Dr. Ayer said, that's the highest form of ventilator that this baby is not breathing at all, that the machine is doing everything for him. In fact, she doesn't like us repeating what she said is pointless. And she's a woman of faith. She said it's pointless. Let's let him go. I said, go away. <laughs> the go away that I'm saying, I have never been so distraught because I knew the journey that it took for a 49-year-old woman to be pregnant. Do you get? And I'd called her the Tuesday before that there's going to be a problem. Let's pray before. Somehow, she didn't reach me. That's why I want to warn you. Even when God, you know, I tell you, with the ministration has started. Even when something is going to happen, God warns you. I was telling one of my mentees, I said, how could something want to happen? She's not going to be give, able to give her testimony. But I said, so, do something for the ch some children in the summer camp because... Oh, I might even ask her to give. You know, and that Wednesday I went, I knew something was up and she had to do something. Do you understand? Please, we're spiritual beings. Don't get carried away. If you are restless, don't switch on Netflix and use Netflix to dampen it. You are restless for a reason. Do you get what I'm saying? Especially women, don't try and make yourself feel better. Restlessness is not a bad feeling. It's like pain. Those who cannot feel pain are some of the most injured people on earth. There is actually a very rare syndrome where you cannot feel pain. And it's not good. To you, it sounds good. But that means when they cut themselves, they don't know. So they get tetanus, they can get gangrene. Do you get? They can put their finger in the fire and not know. The restlessness is your spirit's way of letting you know that there is something off. Dr. Ayo, please, just a minute, and then we move immediately to the next testimony. Uh, did I interrupt the testimonies by telling you that? No, no. I gave you context. Thank you. Thank you. So very quickly, um, I do remember that night, uh, early hours of the morning, and that ventilator, meaning it means that we've tried everything. It's actually a very old type of ventilator. You know, it's called high-frequency oxidation, and we use it when last card. <laughs> More like let it not be that we didn't try, you know. But and what it means is that the if the mother coded, meaning you know there was lack of oxygen, so it means the baby didn't get oxygen. So you know that's brain damage. And we have stages mild, moderate, severe. The minute they start to have seizures, because he had seizures, that's severe. So that's why the doctors were being polite by saying 50-50 meant really, you know, was disability if the child survived. But see God. And I will be honest, one day we were praying, she and I, before she sent the seed, and I saw the child at 25. That's why I knew. Because if we were on the phone and I see, I'm like, he can see? I'll be wondering, are those eyes really following me on WhatsApp video, or am I? Because I know I went to school. 
His brain had no oxygen for 30 minutes. It's a vegetable. But if God does not say it's a vegetable, it's not one. So I don't know what part of your life you believe is dead. The doctors have said he's dead. Maybe the marriage is dead, the job is dead, the brain is dead. The womb is dead. I have too, I've seen too many. Basically, a dead woman had a dead child brought out of her and the two of them are alive. If God does not help us, we have no help. He said, blessed is he that trusted in the Lord. Cursed is he that trusted in man. Trusting in man also means trusting in the systems of man. And I say there's some testimonies, testimonies of awesome treasures. The first thing they do is to prove that everything, every system that the diaspora are trusting is nothing but God. In 2019, I came across Mrs. Olaju Mokia, I didn't know what sermon. I don't really like social media, but because of her, I opened an Instagram account just so I could follow Mrs. Olaju Mokia, I didn't know what. The moment I saw that the All New York 2020 was posted on her page, that was during the COVID-19 period. But despite all Lord, I went to New York and it was such an awesome experience. I made a decision to become a partner, awesome treasure. When I got home, everything changed. My life changed, my marriage changed. One time we were on a prayer call. The prayer call is usually at 3 p.m. my time, central time. It was always inconvenience at that time for me because I work night shift and I have to struggle to get up, you know, set my alarm to be up at that time. But I made sure that I attended every of the prayer call every day I was there. One day she ministered to us. She said, there's someone on the line who wants an assignment. It's not a job. I don't know how to describe it because it's not a new job. It's a side hustle. They're going to get it and it's going to be two times two times because I see the number two. It was during that prayer call that a colleague of mine sent me an advert for a job. It wasn't far away from where I live. I went to fill out the application. The following morning, I got a call from that company. The interview was done on the phone. That was how God doubled my salary. What God did in 2020 for us as a family was beyond our imagination. Then in 2021, we just remembered that time that, oh, we had a plot of land that we purchased in 2004. And that land was just abandoned because we've encountered so many setbacks in our business, so many challenges. And we also had a breeder farm and an archery in Nigeria where we produced the old chicks. But unfortunately, we had to close it. So 2021, we went back to that plot of land that we bought in 2004. And I remember the crossover prayers that we had in 2020. During that prayer, I was writing down every prayer point that was being led by Mrs. A. And I went back to them and I was praying those prayers all over again. We went back to that land and then we began to pray. I remember one of the prayer that Mrs. Adenawa taught us that all oh, earth has, hear ye the word of the Lord. If you are of some treasure tribes, I know you know the prayer I'm talking about. So we stood on that plot of land and we prayed. So when we traveled home, my husband and I held our hands and we prayed. We prayed that prayer and we went to our land, we prayed the same prayer. We commanded the hearts. Then we spoke the word of the Lord, commanding the land that from the day we will lay the foundation, that the land will not lay fallow. And also we went back to our farm, we prayed the same prayer, and we began to command the heart to yield its increase to us. So that was how we started the farm all over again. And before we closed down in 2015, we had only four pains. Today, as we speak, the penthouses have doubled into eight and god has also given us 
two outstation farms within Ibadan, and the business keeps expanding to the glory of God. For our plot of land, <laughs> we received an approval to develop the land, and immediately we received that approval. I sent a copy to Miss Adenowo. The moment she received it, she was brimming with joy, and she prayed that God will make it happen. That was how we started developing the land. And we went to that plot of land, we stood on it, and we commanded the earth that as we lay the foundation, the land will not leak fallow, and that we will finish and complete the building on time. So while developing the land, <laughs> shortly before the decades, my husband was the one in Nigeria at that time, and he ordered for cement, tons and tons of cement. We were on a prayer call one day when Ms. Nadinawa said that we should go out of our house. She was sharing the testimony of how God saved her life. She went out of her house and she, she commanded the earth that nothing that is made from the heart shall by no means hurt her. And I did the same. I was in Dallas, Texas that night and I went out and I prayed that same prayer, not even knowing what was happening in Nigeria. To my surprise, the following day, my husband sent me some picture and he called me. He said, you will not believe what happened. That they brought the cement, the architect forgot to buy the sack to cover it. It rained heavily everywhere, all over the estate, but no drop of rain on our plot of land. What an awesome God we serve. I want to thank God because that building was completed in March 2023 and we moved in in June 2023. Our God is a God of wonder. I'm back home now. I'm also working beside my husband and I've learned a lot since I met Mrs. Adenowo. Although I've already had the foundational knowledge of kingdom finances, or coming across Mrs. Olaju Moki, I didn't know what had opened up my understanding the more. Even after I've attended Salt 1.2 and Kratos, things became clearer to me and I began to participate as led by the Holy Spirit. I want to give God all the glory. I also want to thank Mr. Adeno Wolf. Thank you for your art of love towards me and my family. May God bless you. I love you with all of my heart. I'm privileged to be part of the awesome treasure tribe today. At Awesome Treasures, we are raising a transformed tribe who bring transformation to their spheres of influence. Meet Dr. Tolu Dosomo, Chief Medical Officer at Trinity Unity Specialist Hospital, Akure, Nigeria. Good day everyone. My name is Tolu Dosumu. I run a private clinic in Akure, Nigeria. I met Mrs. A in a conference organized by Remnant Christian Network in Lagos and um, it was an encounter indeed. It was a life transforming experience. I remember she talked about being king priest in the order of Mekisedek. She talked about being sought, being a guerrilla warfare of God's army insidiously bringing kingdom influence in the marketplace and that really got to me very strongly it was like listening to somebody who was higher in the order to which you belong during the event i remember she gave a word of knowledge in my direction and i was wondering if i was the one i got back home with the fire in me i found myself doing three days stretch of fasting every week praying from 3 a.m. to daybreak every day, seeking God to become something, a fraction of what she, she represented. Soon enough, Telu's pursuit of a deeper dimension of God began to yield fruit. At his workplace, supernatural encounters became commonplace. I was just praying and seeking God, and then one day, my first encounter with the supernatural was a day they brought a patient who was almost dying. He had pulmonary edema, he was, he was drowning in his, um, in his chest fluid and he was already having agonal breathing which normally would say it would be irreversible and then I found myself praying and saying I steal this one from the devil and while praying and attending to him I noticed he was still alive after 10 minutes. That gave me courage so I began to pray more, I called my wife, 
we agreed and then two hours after he was back to life and back to his feet he gave his life to christ so that was my first experience of the supernatural and i was wondering is this for real i remember one other experience where i felt somebody was not telling the truth and i just said holy spirit can you just make this person say the truth and then suddenly the person fell off of the chair and began to experience god supernaturally in fact sometimes a, a consultation may end up as a deliverance session we've had god show up in most amazing ways we've seen um, supernatural conception we've seen supernatural childbirth we've seen god do what medicine could not do uh, you know it became a common knowledge in town that if you have a problem and you are not sure if it's spiritual even if it's spiritual or medical come to my hospital god will solve it and we've seen god do so much we have seen spirit of insanity leave suddenly one day an 11 year old boy was brought into the hospital with a sudden onset of insanity his condition is often diagnosed in medical terms as catatonic schizophrenia but Tolu perceived this as a demonic influence. The patient was unresponsive to treatment, kept begging unseen people, and had violent demonstrations. Five people couldn't restrain him. Ultimately, he was delivered from demonic oppression at the hospital and is now perfectly sane. I bless God for the encounter that I had through Mrs. Hay, and I trust that God will use her to raise many more giants in the marketplace who will represent God's kingdom. Thank you. I host a, an interdenominational women conference in Lagos. We started 10 years ago. And then 2021 September edition, Mrs. Hay was our keynote speaker. So I remember that she came in and when she held the microphone, she said, I am not here to preach. I'm here for you to have an encounter. And that was the beginning of the change, not just on that day, but also in my life. So she took the microphone and then she started preaching. And while where I was seated, I just saw that there was an unusual movement in the congregation. I saw my protocols, I saw some of the hushers. You know, if you've been watching Mrs. I haven't attended any of our meeting before then, but I mean, I've watched it a lot of our YouTube videos, you would see that there were encounters when she ministered. So I thought it was one of those encounters that people were just having an experience. But it, it persisted. We didn't know what was happening. Then she was preaching, and then suddenly she said, we should shout the name Jesus three times. So we did. Now, after the program, I got a report. Apparently, while she was preaching, one of the women that was invited for the program, right where she was seated, slumped and died. There were medical personnel in the congregation. They confirmed that she was dead. No pulse, no heartbeat. Why she was preaching. They tried hard, they could CPR, everything they could try. And then when the Holy Spirit, through her, said, shout the name Jesus, at the third time, the woman sneezed and came back to life. She literally came back to life. And so I requested that people should check on her. And to the glory of God, up to today, she's hale and healthy. Hallelujah. Okay. So I left you in October 2022, um, where we were at our place at Rue de l'Echaudet in Paris. And everything was working well. The owner really appreciated the arrangement that we made, uh, but we really understood how much he liked it, he liked the arrangement during our renewal of uh, our lease this past April, when he started to blackmail us and telling us that for any reason, uh, he will increase the, the rent of 25%. In fact, he knew that because we were a young company for less than three years, it will be extremely difficult if not impossible to find another place in this location. And because of all the installation that we've done, we will think twice before move, moving. I felt trapped because it was really unfair, but above all, because since May 2022, I was extremely ill with severe pain. 
that handicapped me and made me slowly cancel all, mostly all my appointments. Basically, either we stay and accept the increase or we find a place in Saint-Germain-des-Prés with a balance sheet with non-profit and while being sick. Obviously, that's a good option for me, means to close. My man became a real battlefield. I said to myself, uh, is it the blessing of the Lord? The blessing of the Lord is supposed to make it rich and added no sorrow. Mm. But how come that, I, I, that situation happened to me? Was it not a blessing? Mm. Is it with a sick body that I will serve the Lord? Mm. Do, do I have to change location to go to a neighborhood that is contrary to the prophecy that I've got? Mm. Uh, and even if I decided to move, how could I make it and pay it? I question everything and my faith first. And yes, throughout this period, Mrs. A regularly called me, pray for me, speak to me. But concerning the company, I didn't tell her anything because me, myself, I was so confused about the situation. It has this moment that you understand the importance of being taught. Two teaching keep regularly come to my mind. The importance of knowing your assignment and your destiny and the one on the intimacy with the Holy Spirit that Mrs. A did during a SALT session. SALT is our mentorship program. It is in this moment that you, you see the importance of the prophetic world. Because as I told you, I didn't say anything to Mrs. A. But since, since 2021, God has spoken through his servant and said to me that I will only be in the best place in Paris. And I knew that for my business, the best place was Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Saint-Germain-des-Prés is like Mayfair, yeah, or Bond Street. It is at this moment you understand, you understand really the importance of keep the word of God near your heart. Because at this time, no one left. It is only you, your soul, and the Holy Spirit. Every day, I repeat myself that I was not there by chance, that I will accomplish what God I've said that I will not quit because I knew that through my consultation, God was speaking to people and transformed their life. I tell you this like, like that, but <laughs> believe me, it was not easy at, at all when you are on the floor near your blood. Yes, because I was bleeding every day. So I began the search, but to be completely honest, I felt stupid. Considering the fact that I know how the real estate in Paris at the moment are, especially with the Olympics coming uh, next year, mm. particularly at Saint-Germain-des-Prés, which is a very touristic zone. Uh, considering the fact that I was supposed to have a surgery in May 2023, so I have to close for three months, so no money. And I have zero uh, fa straight to fight, both emotionally or spiritually. Uh, no. But anyway, out of obedience, I prepare my file. I visit two places. The first one was small and ugly, and till today they'd never come call me back. And the second one was great, but since it was twice the size of our current place, it was only twice expensive. <laughs> but I visited, I, anyway, why? Because a prophet spoke. When Mrs. A came in April 2022 to dedicate the first place, the first cabinet, she said that she thanks God for small beginnings and that this will be the smallest place we will ever be because I got the favor of God. So I submit my fail. The agent called me four days later, tell me that the owner wants to see me and that I have to explain to him some things in my file. I know that it was the financial situation. The morning of the day of disappointment, I found myself at my office. This is important because I never be in the, generally in the morning, I'm not in the office because my consultations are only in the afternoons. So while I was working, a gentleman arrived, knocked. I don't open because I don't have appointment, but this time, I don't know why I opened. He asked me several questions about what I was doing, about the skin. I think I haven't given me, given, given some sample of my product. At the end, he introduced himself and say, I am Mr. So-and-so, the owner of the place which you apply. Come this afternoon, we will sign. <laughs> Wait, let me contextualize again. <laughs> I am invited to sign in a place which was twice bigger than the, the current one. 
five minutes from it, so still in Saint-Germain-des-Prés. And cherry on the cake will be 1,000 cheaper than the place. I was waiting to go to that meeting. <laughs> the gentleman didn't ask me any question. He talked about his skin, the skin of his wife. <laughs> he, 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 and uh, the, my, 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 uh, my parents, I remember now, and she, she handed me the contract and asked me if to read it correctly and sign and give me the keys. I was laughing like that. <laughs> I was, it's only when we did the condition of, uh, of entry that he had me to me two things. That the surprise visit was to test me and he found me brilliant, passionate, um, mastering uh, uh, the, the skin subject. And for him, the strategy that, I've, uh, that I had implanted from the crowdfunding to the way to articulate my business model to get around any blockage, because obviously I know that we were young, was very smart. And he said that because he owns an investment fund. Between you and me, <laughs> I thought nothing. I didn't have any strategy. I don't know. When he talked, I, said, I, said, I, said, I was like, mm, mm. <laughs> but nothing. <laughs> I'll finish by saying that. What I learned during this last year is that is the rest of faith. Don't get me wrong. When I say rest, that doesn't mean that everything was fine. No, it was sometimes very hard, very, very painful. But when I say the rest of faith, it's the rest that faith gives when we allow the, how, the word of God to dwell in our heart and we ask the Holy Spirit every day to help us so that we don't quit. For me, God is faithful to manifest the world when we, we, it dwell in our heart and when we ask it. I thought that I was going to have to fight very hard, you know, having to sustain the business. My balance was good. All my appointments was, the, the people continue to show, and I have not fight. It was grace all the way. God provide all my needs. Thank you very much. Crossing from the darkness to light. It is you, love. Crossing from the darkness to light. Fire My first encounter with ATF was in um, Old London 2021. I came in through the O and everything changed about my life that day. That day I had an encounter with God. I don't know who was here that very day, but that day was really intense. We had the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst that day. And you're going to experience the same today. <laughs> so, um, I want to share my experience with um, I had during SALT 2.3 last year. That was July last year. SALT is um, Mrs. Hayes' mentorship program, which is on um, Kingdom Dynamics, um, Kingdom Finance. And yeah, well, yeah, SALT. Okay. So, during that program that day, I remember, you know, a lot of things were said. The things I actually thought I knew about finance, but no, I didn't know anything. But that day, my paradigm shifted towards finances. And from that very first day, because normally SALT is two days program, and before the end of day one, I knew the Holy Spirit had said to me I was going to sow a seed. And I knew I was going to sow that seed. So coupled with the revelations I got that very day, I was so excited to even sow the seed. I did afterwards. And what happened was really mind-blowing. You're not going to believe this. I'm a nurse. I'm a specialist nurse in the UK. So I used to work with the NHS. I said, I used to. You know why I don't work with the NHS anymore. When I saw that seed, after four weeks, my eye just opened to a new line of nursing that I never knew it existed in specialist nursing. 
after four weeks, after four weeks, please listen, I realized my salary, my salary had gone over 300 percent. So to just give it a little bit of context, it would be um, a salary of a senior consultant in the NHS. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. And the thing is, I knew, God, God just said to me, it's just because I found my betel. I found the right soil to sow. I didn't just sow anywhere. I sowed seed before, yes, but that never happened. But because of that, things changed. And it's just testimonies upon testimonies upon testimonies. And now, I work for myself as an independent nurse. And I don't even have enough capacity to take the work that I get. That I even have to decline clients and say, no, I can't do this. Well, and it's just good. It's just good. Well, I just want to say, I found no better and I'm definitely staying there. My husband and I got married in 2017. We got married. Um, and um, we started trying to have... Um, children almost immediately um, but we really struggled and I think in 2019 we started going to see specialists um, and eventually we had our first daughter so our daughter was born on t at the end of 2021 and then we knew we wanted to just um, carry on having um, children and but we just knew the journey to have our first our daughter it was like a year of trying with you know timing um, we had or actually giving ourselves um, like a deadline and said if we don't have her naturally by this date and God came through and we just didn't really want to start the whole process again for another child um, I think both of us we actually talked about it we were just like a little bit hesitant to go through the journey again of trying um, and then last year I discovered Mrs. A on YouTube and um, I just started binge watching all, all her videos. Um, like I just would sort from the most recent and I was just going back. I got to one where she had ministered at a church um, called Watergate Church. And I think the theme of the conference was called something about fruit. Um, and there was at the end of it, there was an impartation where um, she was just saying like there are people here that um, are going to bear fruit and she said it's not just pregnant women it's also people in business entrepreneurs and I really keyed into that not just for my pregnancy but also even for my business um, and then because I had been following Mrs. I found they were doing salt online um, that December literally like that same weekend so I registered I was like probably one of the last people to um, register I did all the assignment like in one day because I really needed to be on that zoom I knew I needed to be on that zoom I joined um, the Zoom and again at the end she was doing an impartation on Zoom and I was claiming, I was like, I am fruitful. I'm, and the Spirit of God was telling me, but you're already pregnant, you're already pregnant. And I was like, it's not possible. I hadn't had a period for a year at that point. <laughs> you know, my period wasn't regular. So it was like, how is it possible to be pregnant? And then that week after um, the salt online, um, something kept saying, go and do a pregnancy test, go and do a pregnancy test. Now, because of our history, I had boxes and boxes of pregnancy tests just in the house. Um, and so I think that day I was actually working at home and I just took a break and went and did a pregnancy test. I was like, let me just get it out of the way. And it came back saying pregnant. And I was like, no, 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 maybe it's expired. I went and took another brand. I did four pregnancy, I sent Mrs. A the pictures. I sent Mrs. A the pictures on Instagram. I called my husband, I said, come home. And he, I told him, buy different brand pregnancy tests because I think the ones we have at home have expired. He rushed home from work, he brought some more. This was like 11 a.m. You know, he rushed home from work, he brought more brands, we did some more. I was in tears because we had had that discussion. We were like, maybe in the new year, we'll start. Let's just enjoy this one child we have now. And then we'll start the journey again. But God really touched me through a YouTube video from a woman I've never met in person before. And I just really, I just come back to give glory to God. That's all I can say. Olajimoke Adinowo is a multiple award-winning architect with over three decades of industry experience. Described as Africa's star architect and trailblazer when profiled by CNN and the BBC, 
She is celebrated as one of Africa's most outstanding architects and the only female in this elite category. Christened the face of architecture in Nigeria by The Guardian, she has been featured in the world's foremost architectural journal, Architectural Record, and Forbes Woman and Fortune magazine. In 2013, she was inducted into the Hall of Fame of Personalities of Black Ancestry by the University of West England, Bristol, amongst other global personalities of black heritage. She is a quintessential polymath, chartered architect, academic laureate, philanthropist, entrepreneur, chartered arbitrator, author, and radio show host. She is also a member of the International Coalition of Apostolic Leaders. After gaining admission into Obafemi Awolowo University, Leife, at the age of 14, she acquired the first distinction in Master of Science in Architecture in the university's history. She is also an alumnus of several institutions, including the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, the Yale School of Management, MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the IESC Business School, amongst other professional affiliations. She is a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Architects. Starting her career at Femi Majekudumi Associates, where she had the privilege of designing the Federal Ministry of Finance headquarters in Abuja, in 1994, she founded her own multi-award-winning architecture firm, AD Consulting, which also specializes in master planning of eco-sensitive development. It is Nigeria's most internationally awarded firm. AD Consulting's expertise in eco-sensitive master planning is reputable. Olajimoke has been the principal partner from inception to date. In 1999, her passion for raising transformational leaders led her to establish the faith-based philanthropy Awesome Treasures Foundation, recognized by the United Nations and the United States Congress and affiliated to the Edmond Day Rothschild Family Philanthropy Platform. With a focus on young people and women, Awesome Treasures Foundation raises transformational leaders for peace and advancement. The foundation operates on six continents, with initiatives impacting millions. Since 2011, she has hosted her own syndicated radio program and podcast on leadership called Voice of Change. She has been honored with numerous awards for her architecture and philanthropy. These include the Forbes Woman Africa Entrepreneur of the Year 2020, the New African Businesswoman of the Year 2015, the Cambridge African Society Award, and several awards for her architecture and interior design. Besides being recognized as Africa's most inspiring businesswoman by Le Batisseur d'Economie de l'Africaine, Olajimoke Adenowo has perennially been recognized as one of the 50 most powerful women in Africa on several power lists to date. The monograph of her work, Neo Heritage, is the first by a black architect to be published by the world's leading art, architecture, and design publishers, Brizzoli. She is also featured prominently in Agatha Toromanov's Raising the Roof, a landmark publication on the world's greatest female architects in history, and 100 Architects by the Royal Institute of British Architects and the Pratt Institute. In 2019, she was appointed a visiting professor at the Technische Universität München, Germany's leading architectural program, where she was honored as a laureate and a guest scientist of the Chair of Theory, History of Architecture, and Art and Design. Her academic articles have been published by leading publishing houses. Her 12 published books include Woman as God Intended, and her first work of fiction, Beyond My Dreams, which has a cult following. She is also the author of Acts of the Holy Spirit, Volumes 1 and 2, which are compilations of over 200 verified divine interventions through her kingdom service. She is a public speaker at international summits and conferences, including McKinsey and Co. Leadership Forum, Solve at MIT, Cambridge University African Society, the Global Women's Forum, Haus der Kunst Munich, the Institute of Directors, and several other platforms. Olajimoke has served on the jury and panels of global initiatives such as the Carta Initiative for Women Awards. She serves on the boards of corporate entities, educational institutions, and charitable foundations. She is married to Olukoride, and they are blessed with two men. Ladies and gentlemen, Olajimoke Adenowo. I would like to introduce the two men that we're blessed with because we happen to have them here. Todo Alashia and Todo, come up. Do you mind? Thank you. You don't have to. Ah, okay. Well, there are two men. Do you want to say a word very quickly? On behalf of the two. Um, thank you all for being here, and I hope you're impacted today and have fun and leave blessed. Thank you. 
I was just embarrassing them. There's nothing. It's, it's mother prerogative. We welcome all our people from all over who have come. Our panelists from Ghana, Jude Addo, I hope you're somewhere here. Yeah. Fanny Law, thank you for coming all the way from France. Are you clapping? Hello. We would like to welcome, we've welcomed the head of missions from Nigeria, Onele Ludidi from South Africa, a chairperson in South Africa. Thank you. I just want to keep it coming little by little. Cassie, a council member from Nigeria. They flew with their own money, so you have to. It's okay. The partnership lead. Our treasured, esteemed, honored delegates from Switzerland, you're here. From France, from South Africa, from Ghana, from Dubai, from Nigeria. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We don't take you for granted. Thank you. Without you, we can't hold any meeting. We are gathered around you. You are the focus. We are at your feet. We look to you. <laughs> Someone said we had such an intense presence of God. That's because they don't know you well enough. To know that the path of the righteous is like the shining light that grows brighter and brighter until the perfect day. There is never a better yesterday for us, Spirit of the Living God. Today is the day that you have made. Today is a day of our encounter. We give you glory. We honor you. Take your preeminence. Amen. Mm -hmm. You will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. You will not suffer my food to be I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. You will not suffer my foot to be moved. I carry your presence.
spread mistake to think we are singing a song. It's a confession, a profession of what we know to be a fact. That what I came in with, that I do not want to see again, I'm not leaving with it. Oh, after Ola Buja, that you make healing, you know, so simple. Yes, because we are meant to be those who equip the saints for the work of ministry. We're not to make you look at ministry as if, oh gosh, it's so inaccessible. I'm not here to disenfranchise you. I'm here to let you know God is in there. You don't understand. That you can reach him for yourself. My work is to carry the, you into the presence of God and carry the presence of God to you. I can teach you and I will teach by the grace of God prophetically. Teach in such a way that you wonder, did she see me? Do you see? But more important than that, why would people travel from Houston, from Dallas, from everywhere? Because they treasure God's presence. Because we are God seekers. You know, because we know it's not everywhere that God opens portals. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because we know there are levels of the presence of God. The Bible says in Psalm 139, even if I go to hell, he's there. Which means he's even in hell. Then he's in the believer. Then he goes further to say, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Then there is a level of the presence where you know the Shekinah is here. Before you leave, you will know the Shekinah is here. We prayed for you, and we trust God for you. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. There were five people left standing. I've never seen or heard anything like it. Men and women. Somebody said, ah, what really surprises me about awesome treasures is how men fall under the price. Are they not human? Yeah. Said, oh no, men don't like falling. Or like, men don't like miracles. There's things, let me explain to you, that maybe cannot be done with you fully standing. Some operations. That's when God does that. 
He doesn't do it to humiliate you. And those of you who have come to evaluate Christian meetings, you know, faith-based meetings, why are you busy ticking? God is doing something in the life of somebody else. And let me warn you again. Whatever manifestation you see, you can't judge the manifestation. You don't know what it is. Somebody is crying doesn't mean they sinned. It might be that <laughs> they're crying tears of joy. A man is rolling on the floor does not mean he's demon possessed. Do you understand? You cannot judge manifestations. There are mantles that are alive and well on this earth today. Do you understand? When man, the people carrying the mantles go, the mantles don't go. So there are mantles that are in this hall, living and well. There were days you read about God's generals. Those are the things that happen in awesome treasures. I make bold to say it. Hmm. One sentence. Tell the Lord what you want. One sentence. You are in the overflow. Just know that there is no distance. Don't let anybody distract you. It's going to be. Just be seated. Just be seated. Do not let anybody distract you. I say especially the overflow because you know the enemy, as this will say, but you are not in the main one. There is absolutely no distance. In Houston, I think I heard it on the on the, on the testimony thing. Um, in Houston last year, people were in the gallery. The power of God was so strong in the gallery. When they begin to bring them down, the lift begins to move, to sway. When the person who being carried is not under the path, the lift doesn't sway. So I had to ask, what's the meaning of this? Because I had visited the venue, there was nothing wrong with the lift. Anu, are you here? You are carrying people. Am I telling the truth? Come forward, very quickly. Anu is here from Houston. I had to ask God because as a scientist, I interrogate things. I did structural engineering. Um, I got 54B. So, <laughs> that was my worst grade in school, sorry. One of my worst. I don't. What happened? The, the elevator was vibrating. So anytime we try to carry people under the anointing from the overflow, it was just outside of our control. It was such a powerful move of God that we had no words to explain what was going on. Yes, all the way from Chicago. And she's here to work. And we didn't pay for her ticket. So overflow, you are blessed. God just wants to prove a point. Today, we're going to be discussing kings in the city. But I want to tell you straight, what God said to tell you is that the recession is not for you. That's all. But the recession is coming to the whole earth. But it's good for you if you escaped somewhere else because of financial hardship to understand that a lizard in Lagos is a lizard in London. <laughs> it is what you carry within you that changes your environment. It is when things are, should I say, in equilibrium that you carry nothing and you keep moving forward. That's because it's the infantry that you're joking with. When the horsemen come, you better have something within you. And the horsemen are coming over the whole earth. Haggai chapter 2 said, verse 6, Once again I shake not only the heavens, but the heavens and the earth also. But you see, you are here to learn a secret. Or some secrets to your see that will keep you safe. Are you? Do you get it? <laughs> there is nothing, there is no one but like you are we my yeah. There is nothing, there is no one like I am the woman of many covers. There, there is, is nothing, nothing, there is no one like you, are we my There is nothing, there is no one like you. So, God is 
interested in cities. God is interested in cities. Cities are God's idea. He created cities. The idea came from him. So when he created the heavens and the earth, the first microcosm of a city he created was called what? Eden. It's because there are aspects of God's nature that an individual, aspects of God's kingdom and structure that an individual can never exhibit. It's called a kingdom, not a citizen. Do you see? So God has a kingdom. Individuals cannot adequately, on their own, show the glory, the wisdom, the manifested side of our sides of our God to the principalities and powers of this age. When you see us walk together in love, in awesome treasures, it does more to you than when you see me alone, doesn't it? You begin, oh, they're like this. Really, they're not faking it. Oh, wow. <laughs> when you hear somebody came from Chicago, somebody is spending a 40th birthday here, you know that you can't spend your 15th birthday anywhere. So you're wondering, what is it about them? Some of you will not miss dinner to go to a, a meeting because it's just a meeting. This is an encounter. Kingdom. I'm saying the aspects of God's dominion you can only see when you see people relate together. You can see the organization of commerce and of structure at, at a level. But you see man perverted God's city that was balanced the ecosystem was working. The trees were behaving. The, everything was the way it should be. Man perverted it. So today we have cities the way they are with inequity. You know, the city is not just a physical thing. With inequity, crime, injustice, cities that you cannot walk in the park at night. Poor people, homeless. That was not the plan of God. I hope I'm talking to some Gen Z's here who like equity and justice. You will be rich. That's the solution. When you are rich, you can now help people. Because mm. Jesus said, the poor we will always have amongst us. <clears throat> he didn't plan cities with carbon emissions and high rents. That high rent one that just went for you, right? Okay. You'll be all right. <laughs> Man perverted it. So when we see Genesis chapter 11, we see the perversion of man. The minute man got the idea of cities, it wasn't too long before it became an ego-driven matter. When it became a place where the poor are oppressed by the rich. In Genesis 11 verse 1, we see that mankind came together and the whole earth was of one language of one speech. Verse 2, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain a plateau in the land of Shina, and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said to one another, let us make brick. I'm not going to speak King James, right? I'll make it easy. And burn them thoroughly. And anyway, they made materials for building. And what was the purpose? Verse 4. The purpose was because they wanted to build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. They were vying with God for glory. They were saying, we need a brand. We need an identity. We need to be known. We need a name. That's a brand. The brand is not a new thing. He said, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth, which was the exact plan of God. Be fruitful, multiply, scatter abroad. So they said, we will create our own agendas. And right now the cities of the earth, I make both, London, New York, you name it, have their own agendas. I need to let you know nobody created a city so that you as an immigrant can come and thrive in it. No. I'm not saying bad things. You are to thrive as much as you can fuel the ecosystem. End of story. So I'll give you an example. In a Hindu city, the Brahmins are at the top of the caste, isn't it? But there's some people who take care of the refuse and everything. And to make it work, a religion has been structured about, about, around it. That's why you cannot convert and become a Hindu. You are born into it. Am I making sense to you? So cities are structured in such a way that those who are in charge remain in charge. <laughs> Except, honestly, I like physics. He said, everything continues to remain in a state of constant motion. Newton's law of motion. Unless, except 
it is hit by a force of equal or opposite or more. That force is here. So I say, how can you enter a strong man's house and take his goods unless you first bind a strong man? I've had three visions in which I see strong men just being bound. And I understand the meaning of tying a strong man. Hands tied, legs tied, voices muted. So when I say to a demonic spirit, shut up, it shuts up. Why? Because it dares not not shut up. You don't understand. The spiritual world is very legal. I said it in Houston. I said, you don't shut up when I tell you to shut up. You, you, you get out. If not, every Santeria temple in this city is finished. That is, you are minding my, your business, I'm minding mine. If I tell you what to do and you don't do it, that means the angels are free to run and mock over Houston. Do you know that day? We had three physical visitations from one Ifa priest or the other. It's not that they came by night. One drove Chidima to the airport in full regalia. <laughs> one came to meet me and knelt in front of me. The other one said, I have a word for you. It's not a joke. So they're here. I told them, I said, there's 16 Ifa and Santeria houses in Houston. That means they're opening up a perfect portal over Houston. Because that's their number 7, 16. Then you come and you disrupt the atmosphere. One of them came in front of me and knelt. I said, oh, I saw you. I knew what you were doing. She said, no, I want you to pray for me. I said, that's not true. And she got up. She didn't say, uh-uh, but I want you to pray. Why are you doing like this? She knew. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> Things are not like they seem. There's, we are living in parallel realities. The church struggles to engage the city, but God has no issues. He understands that the church and the city are not different per se. We get equipped in the church to go out to the city. We get equipped in the church to go out to the city, but we are not challenged by the city. Do you understand? When we say the city, we are talking about the systems and the structures that are in the city. Music, commerce, banking. Do you get education, health? That's the city. The church does not know how to engage the city. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15, it says the labor of the fool wearies each one of them because they don't know how to go into the city. So we now look foolish. We are not meant to be. And we're laboring, but the salaries are not showing it. I'm here for you. It's not a normal. I can see it if you want us to play. But shall we talk about it? The houses are not showing it. Because we do not know how to go out into the city. We don't know how to engage the city. We don't know how to leverage our spirituality so it can deliver in the marketplace. Am I making sense? That's why you are here. That's why you see people in awesome treasures. Because this is where you know how to use the, your spirituality to birth. Because you are not a mic holder. You are not an apostle, pastor, teacher. This is what you do. It must birth for you. You understand? So when pastors come and say, when I sold a million naira or a million dollars and somebody bought me three million, okay, who will bring you? No, be honest. You've thought about it. Uh, how do I get it? And they just knocked on my door. That's because your, that's your old ecosystem and the kind of services you offer. How then do I do it? Am I still on point? Have I digressed? Thank you. <laughs> he laughed at that. So the church has divided the world into secular and spiritual. But there's no such thing. They're just temples of the Holy Spirit called Fanny Law and Jude and Jumoke, who go out into the city and come back into the church. Their nature does not change. God lives in them as they move. You don't understand. God does not wait until the city comes to the church. He takes the church into the city because there are temples that carry God that enter into the city. Am I making sense? So how can there be secular and spiritual when I am always spiritual? So Colossians chapter 3 says, whatever I do, I should do as unto the Lord. I'm, I'm jumping, but I'll explain to you how you can make it. So that there is nothing like secular or spiritual anymore. No dichotomy. 
Jesus understood that there was no difference between, you know, nothing secular, nothing spiritual. And he knew how to engage the city. Now the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 verse 17 that as he is, so are we in this world. Therefore, Jesus could and he knew how to engage the structures of the world. I'm talking about sophisticated structures. Do you get what I'm saying? Hmm. Jesus understood that cities had gates. And the gates are not tangible. You think when they say this is the gate of Abuja, the gate of Accra, that that's the gate. Sometimes it might be the gate, but the gates are human beings. To the gate to every industry, movie, whatever, is a human being. So Jesus was going to journey forth. I'm making it very simple. He said in the book of Mark chapter 4, let's go to the other side. He says, let's go over to the other side. And then the Bible says, I was going towards the region called the Decapolis. And the Bible says, as he said so, a horrible wind began. And great, a great storm started. Which means when you're about to go into the city, you can expect storms, Vanilla. He knew. He was not. He slept in the middle of the storm. He had rest. Because he knew. He was taking on the city. Now the city he was taking on. It's not any ordinary city. He was taking up a group of cities called the Decapolis. They were 10. They were Hellenic cities. They were Greek cities. They were configured not just as one city, but as a set of 10 cities. Why? Against their Jewish neighbors. Do you get? So that they might remain strong. If you've been to Greece, what is Greece? The center of democracy. That is the 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 the, the pinnacle of government of human beings or the world against God, philosophy against God, art against God. Are you listening? That's what Greece was then. I'm not saying now. All right? So this represented him taking on all the structures of the world that were against the Judaism that he was coming from. And as he was going on the water, a storm arose. As soon as he got to the other side, you understand that Jesus thinks in terms of cities. In Matthew eleven twenty one, he said, Woe unto thee, Chorazim and Bethsaida. He talked to cities. He said, if the miracles that were done in Sodom and Gomorrah were done here, they would have repented. In Luke 13, 34 and 35, he talked to Jerusalem. Why I like that is that he actually said, Jerusalem will talk back. Do you see? So that means cities have a voice in the spirit. <laughs> you will talk to your own city before you leave. Yeah. And those are the, you heard us say, Mrs. Adenawa would teach about the earth. There is a reason. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He's calling it by name. That means Jerusalem is different from Chorazin and Bethsaida. Said, which killeth the prophets? Jerusalem became a city with the reputation of prophets dying there. They slaughtered prophets. Such that when they said, is it time for you to die? He said, how can I die outside Jerusalem? Do you know the history of the city you are in? Why some areas are called what they are called? Some cities are famous in the U.S. for witchcraft. Some areas in London for witchcraft. And then you hear 170,000 people disappear in your small island every year. And you don't know something is going on. What kind of per capita disappearance is that? The way the news reports something, you have to understand that there is something behind that. If it quacks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, it is a duck. <laughs> so Jesus understood that there are kings of cities princes of cities and then their powers behind the thrones of cities. Are you getting it? So he got up and understood that a prince, a king must be saying we don't want your presence in this city. When I took off from Lagos, lightning struck our plane. Do you remember TJ? No, that didn't mean anything. But I said, okay. So the enemy thinks that there's somebody here in all London whose chronic situation is not going to turn around. He's joking. Because whatever it takes, God will get me here. Yeah. Are you getting me? 
Jesus knew that in the book of Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 28.1, he says, Son of man, take a lament against the prince of Tyre. And you see him begin to talk about the prince of Tyre. By the time he gets to verse 3, he says, but you are a man. Then he comes to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 1. He's talking about the prince of Tyre. Then he begins to talk in Ezekiel chapter 28. Son of man, take a lament against the king of Tyros. I, I don't understand. Is the prince the son of the king? By the time you begin to look, you realize that it's not that the prince is waiting for his father to die to take the throne. I didn't say anything. No, I'm just saying. I'm just explaining how we go sometimes. You know, that what is really happening here is there's a prince and a king simultaneously. And by the time they begin to describe the king, it says, you are in Eden, the garden of God. Verse 13. You are the anointed cherub that covereth. Which meant a king sat, a prince sat on a throne like this. And behind the saxophonist or the trumpeter, there was a king. So the, he would come thinking, I have an inspired idea. But he does not know what is inspiring the idea. He will give a new policy. He will give a new whatever. He will be controlled by people's agendas and lobbies. And he will think we're being progressive. But he would not know what is inspiring the idea. Every new idea and technology that you ever see, ask yourself, which agenda is it pushing? From social media to Instagram to Twitter, ask yourself, what does it help? Does it make things better or worse for the kingdom agenda? Are you getting it? No, God is raising the people who can think in this place. He's raising the people who understand that they're not here for themselves. They were created for a purpose and they have an assignment. Hmm. I can see through the eyes of my spirit. I can see a new church rising. Yes, I know they're coming in their thousands. They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. Why was Jesus concerned? about nations, cities, countries. The first time we hear his title being mentioned as the Messiah is in Daniel chapter 9 verse 25. And he's called a prince. You know, I always teach you about the law of first mention. Look at the first time he's mentioned. The Messiah has come not just to save you as an individual. He has come to save territories. You notice that nothing has changed I will use my own city. Rehan Ponke comes. A million people give their life to Christ. They say Oshodi is packed. It's an area in Lagos called Oshodi. And then the very next day, you should expect that if you pass through Oshodi, there should be nobody left to take your chain. Ah, but they're still there. No, 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 no. I'm being very serious. Because you see, even when we're in female activism, we understand that the way you enforce change is number one, get the laws enacted, and then you force compliance. Not one by one. One by one is good. God is sent to us as, you know, one on one. But so that we can thrive, we need that the territory itself should be saved. It, it's so quick to lose a territory when it's only the individuals who are saved, and they are not thinking about the city. Do you understand? While you are here in church, somebody is determining what your children are taught in school. Someone told me, I think I, my son don't even watch TV. I think he learned this bad thing in school. Are you with me? You want to fight the whole educational system? You can. You can homeschool your children. Which is what I would do if I was in your situation. Five or six of us will come together someone's big suburban house, we will get four good teachers and homeschool our children. The law allows it. Because why would I be pretending I left because of the children and then the children themselves can be taken away from you? Are you with me? Have I stepped on your toes? I've just given you a way out. 
Okay. So Jesus got up and rebuked the, the wind and the waves. Because he knew the wind and the waves are subject to him, number one. Number two, they are frustrated. The Bible says that the whole creation groans, ready for the manifestations of the people who are in the hall today. Ready for those who say, stop punishing humanity. Enough tsunamis. Enough, are you understanding it? The creation does not like what is subject to. God is not for climate change. The Gen Z's are shocked. Oh, she's talking about climate. I'm very concerned about climate change. Are you with me? So, that's why when I was in Houston too, and they said the precipitation is 99 point something percent, the day before it rained like rain was going out of business. And we had a summit. <laughs> you are on the prayer call. I said to the, the rain, hear ye the voice of the Lord earth. One servant does not disturb another servant. You are meant to serve God. I am on a mission to serve God. There will be no rain. In Houston, tomorrow. Was there rain? I don't know how AccuWeather handled it, but there was no rain. Are you with me? Jesus entered the Decapolis, and then the story just started. Mark 5, 1, as soon as he entered the Decapolis, who met him? A demoniac. Who had 6,000 demons in him. One human being. I put it to you that that demoniac was the gate of the Decapolis. He was the one who was the repository of the 6,000 demons through which the Decapolis resisted godliness. Are you there? Every human, every mountain of music, of media, of sports has a prince. And that prince can have <laughs> influences which is why God says, and it shall come to pass, that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted above all the mountains and above all hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. However, how do we take over the mountains? We're going to do a few strategies today, because we can't finish. I basically wrote a book, and I trashed it, like, we can't do this. <laughs> Somebody's laughing, but it's really what happened. He's <laughs> okay, saw me. I basically wrote a book. The demoniac immediately came to meet him. He did not call the demoniac. The demoniac knew incoming, incoming, there is problem. Honestly, when you enter a territory, the sound shall go. Invasion. He has flown in. She is in. The territory should be afraid of you. Look, these things have happened before and I'm trying to explain. To, look, in those days, Charles Finney will be going through a city and conviction, he's passing through on the train and conviction will begin to fall on the people, a human being like you, not Jesus, an American. An American who has decided that God, if you use anybody, use me. I don't know if the person is here today who has said, if you use anybody, use me. And I'm presenting to you that you don't have to go into the church. And you don't have to put on a collar. Dr. Dosumu just let you know that. <laughs> and they said, have you come to torment us before our time? They didn't say... You cannot. In fact, the reason why they were saying that it's a bit long, but you can watch um, all, all Joburg, is because they thought this was God himself, because they could see he was God. They called him Jesus, son of the most high God. So they said, son of the most high God, territorially you are off, because gods are not meant to operate on earth now, because the heavens, the heavens of heavens belong to God, but the earth belongs to the children of men. You are not a man. The problem is they did not know that Galatians 4, 4 said in the fullness of time, when God saw a submitted woman, he came to this world as a man. So that's why Jesus kept saying, the son of man, the son of man, he was enforcing to you, explaining to you his legitimate reason for being on earth. Let me explain. You can only function in the territory from which you came. So fish function in the water. 
except for Tolu Alashe, myself, and TJ, who also scuba dive, but not without our oxygen tank. Mr. Adenowo always obeys the law of territoriality. He does not. But you get what I'm saying. You want to go, you must modify yourself for that environment and carry an oxygen tank. So they were saying, Jesus, you cannot come here not knowing that he was God. He said, have you come to punish us before the time? Because they know there will come a time when they must go into the abyss. But for now, they can only be evicted, which they will be today. Because they're illegal. Their territory is not your body. Oh, you don't get it. They are illegal. Therefore, any spirit in the overflow or here that is functioning in a human body knows that right now it's in the wrong territory. John 12, 31 says, Now is the prince of this world judged. Hmm. Cabre sali kato mare kapu sekete kete kete. Foreigners shall hear my voice and come trembling out of their close places. A people I have not known will obey me when they hear my voice. They shall obey me. Rebo koso toli kari kata kata li krabo sekete ni brakuria. Begin to give a quick notice to everything that has been disturbing you. Its territory is not your body. Falling angels are bound in Tartarus. Active angels are in the heavenlies. What is it doing in your body? Kayeba satali braku brakatantali kende eba satali brashatai. Sometimes you just need to put your foot down. Do you understand? You need to set a date that is called today. Hope is tomorrow. Faith is just today. And if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart. Forget your head if it's doubting in your heart but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass you shall have whatsoever you say <laughs> they said do you want to cast us out before it's time and they began to implore him that they should not be cast out of where the region they were they had an assignment in the territory. They were ready to make do with swine if they could not get human bodies. But they needed to be around because the human beings leveraging them lived in that area. Oh! Why are you afraid of witches? It's time to talk. Do you know what witches are? They're human beings who channel demons. That's all. They have a technology bidder by which they channel demons. And not ordinarily. They must spill blood. Demons are not omniscient. Satan is not omnipresent. If you want him to appear here, you must raise an altar put blood on it, open a portal with that blood so he can step through. I've over said it, Abby. 
you are now afraid that even she gone, how does she know? I'm giving you secrets so you can go back to your village if you want to go at Christmas without being afraid. So let me tell you why witches are more dangerous than demons. Very simple. They're humans and they have a will. So when you bind a demon, they may not give up. They go, invoke another. That's why God says, suffer not a witch to leave. Cuckoo killed them. Because they may stay at it because they're rebellious. Are you with me? He cast out the spirits out of that man. They went into the swine. They were drowned. But understand that there were forces, are you listening, that were using the 6,000 demons to reign, to incarcerate other human beings, to cause trouble within the area. Perhaps one of the 6,000 or 10 of the 6,000 demons were the ones whipping up the waves to keep him away. Why? Because nature does not just fight man. Something makes it. It couldn't have been God. Why? If Jesus had then cast, you know, rebuked the wind and the waves, he was fighting his father. And he can't do that. Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Therefore, not everything that comes against you is from God. Stop blaming God for every situation. Can you tell it? Peace! Be still. Womb, do what you are meant to do. Brain, function. Pass this exam. No, I'm not joking. People pass exams here. We don't even take examination passing. You pass, you are meant to pass when you get here. It's if they call you to apologize for daring to fail you. Then we can now take the testimony. It's happening, Jude, this doctor, you ask now. It's true, we made a mistake. We, the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons, will really be very happy to have you join our prestigious institute. We will not do it again. Hmm. Pray in the spirit. We are going to... Why have you been so afraid? Your time has come. Amen. I'm telling you about how to get into the city. Seize the gate. Seize the gate. You know where God sent you. And you know who said you will not enter here. Seize the gate. Congratulations. Under your anointing, I abide under your control. I stay in your arms, Lord Jesus. I know I am safe. I abide. Under your anointing, I abide under your control. Hmm. Look at the weirdness of the situation. When 
The Decapolis heard that this man was well. They were afraid. They weren't afraid of the demoniac. They were afraid of the one who set him free. The value system was warped. Just as the city's value system is warped. Am I ministering to anybody? You are getting it now. Thank God. They said Jesus should leave. The man said, let me go with you. Jesus said, stay. He said, go back to your friends and tell what God has done for you. The strategy God has to take over the city, young people. Let God handle your life. Then go back. The people who knew what you used to be. Yeah. Amos, is that not you? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> but where did you go? Is the first thing they will ask you. Because they know you have to do something for something to change. Somebody with me. Go back to your offices. Go back to your houses. Go back to your neighbors. Go back to your colleagues. He did not say sleep in church with me. Nothing wrong with church. Oh, don't get me wrong. I go to church. Are you with me? Say, go back. Tell what God has done. By the time we see the same man again, Jesus now went back to Decapolis. He says, because you will prepare the city before I come. Now listen. In Luke chapter 10, he's talking again. We all think when he sent out people, it was the apostles only he sent. No, he sent the apostles in Luke chapter 9. When Luke chapter 10, he said he sent another 72. They are known as apostolic people. There's some in this room. They are not apostles, but they're apostolic people. What makes you an apostolic person? You know the mandate. You submit to it. You submit to it. You pick it up. And then the forces angelic and otherwise that go with the mandate move with you and the 72 not 12 72 ordinary people came back and said even the demons were subject to us in your name jesus said it's small i was seeing that's what the aramaic said satan fall from heaven like lightning it was repeated as you said come out as you said go he was falling his defeat was being repeated again and again and again. His defeat is eminent in your life today. You don't live here without it. <clears throat> so the demoniac went back. By the time Jesus came back, 7.32, they were carrying people to him. He was preaching for how many days? Two days until people couldn't go home to eat you know what people couldn't go home to eat anymore and it was in that same decapolis that he fed the five thousand did you know that same place that they said you cannot come in strategies for taking the city he's sending living portals into the city change people into the city because the city won't come to him they will not let him in they can't keep you out. Because of what? The law of territoriality. The city is your home. You pay tax. Are you understanding me now? You getting me? They can't send you away because you're a partner in the law firm. You're carrying God as you go. <laughs> you will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome. Man. awesome. Do you now understand the song? Carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Oh, man, awesome God. So, we're 
we're still on this story. I said, Jesus is giving us strategies for taking the city. The city has a gate. And the gate is not physical. The gates are human. Did you see a human being who had 6,000 demons within him? And he himself didn't know what the demons were for. Do you get? It's not as if he invited them. It's not as if he wanted them. He was happy to be free. Somebody saw an empty container that was not full of the power of the Holy Spirit that he could use. And they feel the first one came in, got more. The first one came in, got more until the man had 6,000. I don't care how many thousand you have today. You are going out full of the Holy Spirit and of power. <laughs> Say strategies for taking the city. Number one, I said the apostolic people. Apostolic people must be submitted. Here I am. Send me. In that Colossians 3, I explained to you. He said, whatever you do in work or in deed, or in word or in deed, do as unto the Lord. But he said, do as unto the Lord Christ. There are no meaningless details. Do as unto the Lord the Messiah. Who is the Messiah? The Prince of Territories. Not just a savior of individuals. The Jews expected that somebody was going to come and take the empire and the kingdom. Therefore, whatever you do as at work at, in your school, in your bank, wherever, do as a if Jude, you are taking territory. Oh gosh. The reason why your salary matters to you so much is because you are working for yourself. Mm -hmm. You had Tola's testimony. When you begin to work for God, he's ready or busy zone. BC said her salary change. I don't know why the people call it salary because you salary people are used to salary. It's not your salary when you have a side hustle and you make twice from your side hustle than you make from a regular job. That's not a salary anymore. It's a plus two. Are you there? Yes. Abiding where she was abiding in the case of BC, she didn't change that job. And the side hustle was now paying her double. Why? Because she had taken on God's assignment. When you take on God as a, your employer, he pays good wages. It's an internal shift. Who are you working for now? It's an internal shift. It's a heart posture. It's not about resigning or not resigning. Miles Monroe said, kingdom people do not take jobs. They take assignments. You can tell God this salary is low. And then he says, but I have an assignment. Then you say, I must not live less than, you know. And he says, trust me. He likes people who challenge him like that. Because it proves that you believe he's real. The faith that takes on German the prayer is the faith that takes Mayfair. And I said the word and she believed it. The first time she believed it, she went for it. The second time she said, but she said this is the smallest place. Hmm. Hmm. You see... Romans 6, 16 says, whosoever you submit yourself to, to him, you are a slave. Therefore, because of that, when the enemy wanted the territory called earth, Dr. Kemi, he did not seize the earth. He seized the man. You get it. Because if he seized the earth, which is why we can cast him out easily today, if he seized the earth, he cannot function because he's not meant to. It can only function through the bodies of those who yield their bodies. Have you yielded your body? Aren't you tired? Well, don't you think it's time those forces get another postcode? Is somebody following what I'm saying? Because of that, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 to 10, I'm telling you, Jesus understands territories. Satan too does. The Bible says when Satan was tempting Jesus, he took him up to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the earth, not nations. Kingdoms, which meant somebody's kingdom of music might spread from Nigeria to South Africa. 
but his nation is South Africa. Are you with me? Then the enemy said, I can give all this to you because they've been relinquished. It is submitted to me. I didn't take it by force. They obeyed me and I was able to get it. And what he was telling Jesus is that I know you're coming to bring up a race of superhumans who will be like you. He was trying to truncate it. Don't worry. Here is the kingdom. Bow. He said, kiss my hand. And it is over. But Jesus said, no, you know why? He was looking to you and to me. If he did that, he would have secreted the process. He would have been a king, but impossible for him to be a savior. He only would have been the king. Is anybody following me? It would have been only him who could be a king. He would not be able to, according to how Hebrews 2.10 said, bring many sons to glory. Are you in glory? When we say glory, people hear a spooky, you know, this is word. Glory means weight. Weight of gold. Weight of influence. Weight of dignity. Weight of a platform. He suffered all that so that you may not remain in your state. He said, if I, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. If I don't do it the right way, there will be no place for a substitutionary sacrifice. Because of Ayo, because of Jomoke, I will go through it. I will not take the shortcut. But look at what Satan said. He said, he's basically saying, I own the kingdoms because the kings are mine. So there were physical men on the throne. Are you getting it entering into the city? Physical men in the offices, physical men in the banks. I said, don't worry, that bank is mine. <laughs> Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God. Eternity is holy King. Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God. What brings forth the evening? Barahu and Adonai Evo Lam Evo Lam Baye Barahu and Adonai Evo Lam Evo Lam Baye I'm not singing overflow I'm reminding the owner of the heavens and the earth that his name is El Olam that it does not matter what kingdoms of the earth that the enemy thinks he has I'm saying blessed are you O Lord our God eternity's holy king your word calls for the evening upon the cities your word calls for the morning and the sunset <laughs> people are saying me I don't know why Gen Z people like me but maybe my internal I'm internally Gen Z <laughs> Matthew 5 13 is the strategy he said you know I, I told you that first John chapter 4 verse 17 says as he is so are we in this world and that world there is cosmos is not the earth as Jesus functioned so we also function when we engage the world and its systems. He didn't write an exam, fail it, and say it was because I'm dull. When he had done everything, he engaged the spiritual to enter into those tangibilities. Are you understanding? Matthew 5, 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Please listen. But if the salt has lost his savor, Wherewith shall he be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot by men. If the salt has lost its savor, do you know the 
Greek word for that. I'm not using it to boast to. It's because you would not expect it. It's moreno. And it means if the salt has become foolish. That means when the church loses its wisdom, loses its strategy, what does the earth look forward to? Let me be very honest with you. If there's a problem in a nation, it's the church to blame. Because number one, we don't understand that we're salt, which means we must leave our packet to become effective. That means we must leave that place where all of us are gathered before we can become effective. Which is why I keep telling you, the work you do in church is taking care of your father's house. That's not the work of the ministry. That's you're getting up in the morning and laying your bed. That's normal. Are you dirty? Shouldn't you do that? Don't you clean your bathroom? So I'm working for the Lord. What are you, Amanosha? You are not working for the Lord. You are doing your chores. I'm not even sure I should say thank you or not for that. That, that means you're a good child. But when you get up with power and glory and face the investment bank on Monday morning and they have issues and you go into the bathroom and you are in a board meeting and the company said, Maraka sekete li krando basata li breni makubre de makapa. Teperi, I didn't say on the board meeting, in the bathroom, recanto le shata le kari alabasata. And you sit down and say, I thought maybe we should take it this way. After a while, they say, we can't stand him. He goes to church every Sunday, but you always have a solution. You are the salt of the earth. She's an embarrassment to us in the movie industry because she does not show what she should show. However, nothing she does fails. Let me be very honest. There's no boss who wants to fail. They will use you. <clears throat> it says that we're yeast. Matthew 13, 33. How does yeast work? You walk it into dough. When it does not, into dough, not into yeast. So you don't stay in church and get walked into church. Go and then you will walk. So you're saying I'm a minority in that office. You are meant to, do, to be. Salt is a minority inside you. If your wife can cook, cook. Or if you can, when salt becomes a majority inside you, we don't let you cook again. <laughs> and when you put yeast inside dough and the, it's not working, what do you do? You put heat and pressure. So the Bible says in this world you will have the lipses, pressure. Not crisis or chaos, but pressure. When the disciples refused to leave Judea, and he said you go from Judea, Samaria, all the ends of the earth, he gave them persecution, they scattered. Some people are here because of pressure. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I said you will submit, like the kings of the earth submit themselves. You will submit that work of your hands. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Take over. You are anointed to excel. You are anointed to serve. The way, Gen Z, to get it done is service. So the disciples were arguing amongst themselves. I'll come to the anointing later, but first, service is the way. When you are sprinkled as salt, you are sprinkled to serve. Not sprinkled to Lord. You rise into dominion most times, you understand? But you enter, you enter quietly. Nobody knows anybody entered that office. They didn't know that the person was going to end up dictating everything. They don't know that the, the, because it has been said about you. And let them have dominion. Wherever you go, you have dominion. Invariably, your destiny is dominion. You may not start with dominion. You must end with dominion. Ha! You are sprinkled to serve. Jesus said in Mark 10, the sons of thunder came to him. Who will be the greatest? He said, we, are, we don't do like that here. Whosoever serves becomes the greatest. So kingdom people go back to the city to serve the city. <laughs> to serve it. To serve even the lowliest. Those who travel with me see how I treat Itibebe, the porter, the bellboy, the waiters, the people, everybody has forgotten. 
I'll tip a waiter. The waiter will come back and say, it's too much. I said, that's what happened. Even to has seen it happen now. It's too much. I'm like, I'm giving you. I have a right. The rest of you go like, we are looking for the same thing. What you are looking for is what I came for. <laughs> oh, gosh. We have to change our mindset. It's called royal generosity. If you're a king, when you enter the city, your generosity is different. Alexander the Great, right? A, a beggar asked him for money and he threw him three gold coins. And his advisor said, no, that doesn't make sense. The beggar would have been okay with three copper coins. Alexander said, yes, but Alexander's generosity does not fit three copper coins. Do you see where I'm going? <laughs> when the, the, the king, queen of Sheba came to Solomon, Solomon gave her everything she asked, and then he gave her with the royal hand. That means the measure he used was who he was, not who she was. So when I come to you for something, Jude, what you should give me should reflect what you are. If I ask for a pencil, I should be looking at a Mont Blanc pencil coming from you. Do you see what I'm saying? But for you, you see, how much do they need? $6.99. Okay, give them $6.99. Make it a transfer so that you won't add 1p because if it is coins, it will be seven pounds. I said we are anointed to serve. The very first time we hear of the Holy Spirit filling anybody, it was here. And he was filled not to serve in church. 31, 31, 1 to 2. He was filled to serve. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah. Verse 3. And I filled him with the Spirit of God. First time. First time. It was not about prophecy. Do you get? That means the original reason. For the spirit of God coming. The original reason. The original reason was for this. For wisdom, understanding, knowledge. In all manner of workmanship. It was creativity in bringing superior solutions. That is why the spirit of God came. Verse 3. That's in all manner of workmanship. Are you getting me? Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18. He said, and I looked and I saw four horns and I said, what are these? Horns means position of strength to harm. A recession is a position of strength to harm, isn't it? Some agendas are positions of strength to harm, aren't they? Four horns rise over the land. He said, what are these? He said, these are the horns that have come to scatter Judah, this and this. He said, but I have a remedy said, who are they? Verse 21, I have raised four carpenters. What are four carpenters? Four craftsmen. Four people who are skilled in their art. The time of not being skilled in your art is over. Amen. Heard what Fanny Law said. He said, the man said, you know what you are saying. You know what you are meant to do. The time of being skilled in your art is here. For you to know and that's what we're going to be praying for. Let the spirit of God begin to pray. Fall upon me in wisdom, in understanding. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Nobody must be better than me at that job. Feel me. I'd like... I'm releasing four carpenters. I'm releasing four carpenters. God said to me when I was praying for this meeting, I'm sending prophets to the marketplace. That means people who know the trends before the trends happen. Who know what the nation ought to do. I told you there is no separate ministration time. Those who know what the nation ought to do. 
What is the next direction? Let's take it down. Amen. You are in a safe place here. You know why? Because a listers need God, Joe. Ah. God says he's terminating your struggles. You are doing well, but the struggle is a lot. I even see the number three, so I don't know. Masateli bashata kata kata kata. I overturn. I overturn. I overturn every contention against this life. Let him come into his glory. Let him shine. God said to tell you part of the problem is you have nobody. You can tell that. You know what? Things should be better. Because around you, everybody thinks that's okay. He's doing fairly well. They're about to see what do well means. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray. Father! Father! Send to me. Send to me. Favor in another dimension. Favor in another dimension. We are praying, you are praying. You are, praying. are you praying in the overflow? Favor! Favor! Listen to me. You will learn how to pray and how to pray skillfully because you're a king and a priest. Kings dream because they're the ones who have the ability to execute. So Nebuchadnezzar would dream. Pharaoh would dream. Someone now said, vision without provision is television. If somebody is not a king, is dreaming. What does he want to use to do it? But when the kings dream many times, they don't understand the strategy. Then they call Joseph. Then they call Daniel. And we call them prophets, but they're really chief of strategy. Contextualize things. They begin to say, you will do it this way. Then after you will do it that way, the power of God is coming to this hall. I know you're saying, but already people are saying, no, 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 it's just coming. Hi! Mm. And I want to make sure I say some things. There was a year we couldn't preach. Kings and priests. You are meant to go forth. Not the way you've been taught. Go as a king. Come back and ask us for strategy in the church. No. You are a king and a priest. Not a king or a priest. So your kingship is carrying its priesthood with it. So when it is time to execute on your platform that the king has. You go to your God because what does a priest do? A priest mediates between God and man and between man and God. And you say, what do you think I do in architecture? I've designed and built 114 buildings. I started at 25. Do you even think they would let me speak at 25? If what I was saying was not superior to what everybody else was saying. You say she's a woman, but... She's young, but her solution is superior. And how did they come? I said, come back at 12. 
without confidence, I said, come back, I don't know what to do. I will turn and say, Holy Spirit, I told them, come back at 12. What do we do? If indeed there was a spirit in Daniel, and it's the same spirit in me, that's all I go where is the Lord God of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Elijah? I'm a doctor, this child is about to die. Not on my watch. You begin to download as priests. You begin to download as priests what you are going to execute as kings. Are you getting it? I'm going to be forced to stop now. But no, haven't done all this. There's a reward. Promotion is coming. Oh, yeah. Do it with excellence, do it with integrity. Do it with creativity. You can add passion. Because those are AD Consulting's, you know, values is, is epic. Excellence, passion, integrity, and creativity. We look throughout Proverbs. That's what you see. Wisdom is excellence. Wisdom has integrity. Wisdom is creative. Am I ministering to somebody? Thank you. You know, promotion follows. Till Pharaoh says, only in the throne will I be superior to you. This is why you must submit, because you cannot be egotistic, sir. If you are looking for the title, you may never get influence. Because the king of the earth does not want somebody who will struggle with him. But only in the throne can they be superior to you. Guess who holds the power? You. What you need is executive power, not titles. Now, I'm going to bring my packages up. I said they should send, send the manager of the, I said of what? Jude is a Ghanaian, Roberts. Manager of what? Of the packaging room. I said, okay, send me the vice president of the packaging room. God said to me, in Luke chapter 19, verse 13, we see Jesus saying, well, it's Jesus. It's an allegory about Jesus. A rich man who said, Staramide, occupy till I come. The word was do business till I come. Engage the marketplace till I come. Is the most spiritual endeavor you can be. You are doing what your God told you to do. Occupy. Take over. Change the landscape till I come. Are you with me? Change the landscape till I come. And then when he came, he gave them gifts. Young people gave them talents, intelligence, what to do it with. He didn't just send them like that. And some did well, some didn't. Go and read the um, parable. When they, he came back, the one who had done well had gained five more talents. He said, verse 17, please look, because it's very important. He said, well done, good servant. Because thou hast been faithful in a very little. What was a little? Money and gifting. Listen, money, you have some. It may not be plenty. But what has been given to you is given as a test. And ability, capacity. What did he give him? Ten cities, call it. Gave him territory. Influence. Right now, you may not have territory. You have money. You have talent. He wants to give you territory. Influence. The landscape, he wants to hand it over to you. Your industry. Are you getting it? We are actually meant to control territory. His intent, Fanny Law, on this city matter. Heaven and earth will pass away. Go and read Revelations. And a new Jerusalem will come out. It's a city. What will come back is cities that's going to need governors. Guess who will govern? Those who have proven themselves in this dispensation as being able to handle what they were given. We're being tested. We're in school. And you're getting carried away. I must build houses. I must build... Something that can melt down. Do you see what I'm saying? And we keep hustling. 
over things that have no eternal value. Which is why when Lazarus, Jesus said, a certain man, it's not a parable. The rich man ended up envying the beggar. How long will it take? 70 to 80 years, it will all be over. And then there will be an eternity. Marriage, all the things you scrambled for will no longer matter. There's no husband in heaven. There's no wife. What are you going to do now? You who, who landed the husband. That's why we don't go Mrs. Mr. Because you can make single people feel tired in church. Let me tell you, Mary, why? Why are you doing like this? We were single to where people now. Take it easy. Out of my belly Do you know what God told me this morning when I was singing that song? He said, I did not say out of your belly in church shall flow rivers. He says, there is a river, the streams whereof make like the city of God, the holy place of the habitation of the most High." God is in the midst of the city. Why? Because there are living portals carrying the river. you cannot go without knowing God and hit those who worship the altars day and night what is your own altar where do you go for strength final word Malachi chapter 3 verse 18 it says then you will return and discern the difference between he that serveth God and he that serveth it not. Why? A day is coming that is burning like an oven. It will burn. And the ones who know what they're doing now are loading up. That's the story of the five, the ten virgins. They were all virgins. Some were prepared, heard the right word, full of the spirit. Some thought everything is cool until the day came. Said, so then you will return and know the difference between them who serve God and they who serve Him not. The time has come. Are you ready for an impartation? As the river flows, it begins to bring every death into life. As I live in Oh, let it flow right here, right now. And as the river flows, it's to bring every death into life. It's a life-giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Raise your hands to heaven. I saw eagles fly. One went round the horn, which means whoever wants the eyes of an eagle. Because it is with the voice of an eagle, its voice that it secures its territory. Who wants to rise in the morning and say, Maradako, Liseke Teriba. This postcode, nothing moves unless God moves it. Let me tell you, there are people who are doing the opposite in the spirit realm. This postcode, they've divided the cities into lots. Raise up your hands. We're going to raise a shout unto God because it's going to give us seven people. The power of God is coming upon them now. And it is the prophetic. It is not so you can see visions in your room. It is so that when you go back to that workplace, business ideas, everything will begin to flow. I'm going to count to three. I want your trumpet to go with me. It's a shout, oh, any shout you like. If it is mercy, shout mercy. If it is leave me, shout leave me. Whatever it is. At the count of one. The count of two. The count of three.
to me. And the only reason why they bring you out, I'll tell you why, is sometimes the work is ongoing and then I'm led to lay my hands on you. That's all. I can see a woman in orange there. I can see Bola Horn here. So you see, it's not, to, it's not a display. It's so I can help you if need be. <laughs> Put your hand on your head. That's the seat of power. There is nothing, there is no one like you. Are we my There is nothing, there is no one. Somebody should go to the overflow. Father, they think the overflow is far. We my There is nothing. As those who are hungry for you in the overflow. There is nothing. There is no one God, God, visit them. Not so far as There is nothing. There is no one. I'm going to count to three. God said, I'm making you my trumpet. What does a trumpet do? Announce whatever the trumpet blower is saying. He says, I'm ending the season of poverty and lack. That's what he said. I said, this recession is not for you. One of my mentees was asked to write her own job application. She's already on the job. So they're going to advertise for the job. Write your own advert what you want so that it can be only you that can fit it <laughs> things are happening now. here one you are going to shout Jesus if there is any spirit that is sponsoring lack in your life Your hands are burning, right? The lady in cream. It won't stop in this meeting. So let me explain. I will help. When your hands are burning, your feet are burning. Something is burning. There's a work going on in your life. You go home. You press into it. You don't say, ah, God, this burning is again. One investment bank. I was like, what do I do with this? You pray that the work be completed. Yeah. Seven people now, your hands are going to start burning as we shout hallelujah. Others will be slain, but those whose hands are going to start burning, I say if there is any, anything that's been contending, it's, don't be putting your mouth in people's businesses if they're not doing well. You do not know what they're fighting. Some are about to be the first one to break through in their, in their family beyond that. So there is a contention. It's not ordinary. But you will break through. You don't get it. Where nobody in your family has ever gone. In three generations. I see cycles in your family. So what happens is when it is time for the person to rise. From your grandfather to your father now is your turn. The cycle starts again. I see a wind blowing. It blows on everything. Come, 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 come. Here, you can send. <laughs> Any song you like. We're going to shout hallelujah. I told you, so ushers know what to look out for. One. Two.
going to sound. Men, put your hand wherever you want it to be. Put it on your chest, wherever. He said, Dr. Kevin, that it's actually, you won't believe it. There's, you will. There's actually a deliberate attempt to bow down the heads of men so that they cannot have a voice in their family. It's the rare woman who knows how to submit to a man that she's doing so much better than. You understand? Are the men ready? I'm going to count to three. Every position, every formation that has resisted every man that is tired of struggling must give way. Angels of the living God that hearken unto the words of God's command and do his bidding. The angel of breakthrough. They live here and their forehead is written. They are the Elperazim, the Lord of the breakthrough. Begin to run through a troop leap over the wall. I sound the shofar in the spirit. I close the season of hustling. I said last year to somebody here, hey man, I said you will be in rooms and you wonder how you were there in the meeting. I have a witness by January. He was wondering how we got into some rooms. It only takes a word and mixing it with faith in your hands. Are we ready? One, two, three. pray for favor. Favor. Favor is what makes somebody keep an opportunity for you. Favor is what makes them pass over so many others who are qualified and say it must be you. It, you cannot succeed without favor. You cannot take the city without favor. The Bible says God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. That's what he could do. But one more prayer point I'll take after this favor will be healings. Listen to me. The psalmist said in Psalm 31 verse 21, you have shown me your gentleness in a strong city. Can you pray for one minute? God, show me your gentleness. Call the name of your city. That is, you show me your loving kindness. And he has to show it through men. So he understands you're asking for favor. Show me your gentleness. Show me your gentleness. Show me your loving kindness, O God. Your loving kindness in a strong city. That human beings will know God is kind to this man. God is kind to this woman. What is special about her?
It's just the way I, I want to do it. Because I want you to know the time of impact. I'm going to shout, we're going to shout hallelujah. Some people's feet warm. See my feet, what's happening. You won't be able to keep your feet still. Why? Because you've stayed in one position for too long. And favor is about to lift you. Yeah. Okay, watch last year's video. Go and listen to the testimony because it looked like we're just talking. For Anu, for instance, I listened to all Houston. She said she saw me in a dream. I was giving her a strategy. Her boss called her. And then her husband remembered the dream. And TRM Day had failed the exams, failed. And then he was about to do an exam, sorry. And, you know, he's a vet doctor trying to do an, a hard IT exam. Judy said he had a dream in which he saw me teaching. No, he came to the window as I was teaching his wife. He passed to. You're asking for favor. Please, favor is a force. Exodus chapter 3. said, and I shall give you favor in the eyes of these Egyptians. If not, the Egyptians had relatives now. Why would you give slaves your gold? There's something that comes upon you that makes it difficult for people to tell you no. Yes. I'm devoted to your And then he says, every woman shall ask. So if you're a woman in this room, there is a special dispensation of favor for women. I have never seen your kind I'm devoted to your praise And forever to your name You are good, you are good, you are kind I have never, have never seen your kind I'm devoted, I'm devoted forget a suckling child and not have compassion on the son of a woman. You are believing God for the fruit of a woman. Put your hand there. You are trusting God for healing. Put your hand where it's bothering you. As for favor, that one is coming on all of us who won't. Okay. You are going to shout whatever you want to say to your Lord. If it's mercy, say mercy. But we are going to blow the trumpet. Do you understand? You know why I'm blowing the trumpet? We are gathering every spiritual force that works for you. That are your angels asleep? Can they not see what has been going on in your life? Do you understand? So if I were you, I would shout mercy. Mercy. I'm not joking. No. Mercy. The time has come to have mercy on Zion. The set time has come. One, two, three.
Jesus' name. Ah. Mm. I see someone in this area, just like I told your friend last year, and you are dancing. Eh? No, you don't understand. As I'm even talking, the dance will come upon you. <laughs> the joy will come upon you. Amen. Father, release the joy, release the laughter that comes ahead that lets us know. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. When we make an altar call here, it's because we realize that this is a revival. It is what it is. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. You are in the overflow. You are here. I want you to come forward very quickly. It's not the time to sit down. See, London people. It doesn't mean you are coming now, but you are praying. So, beautiful. Thank you, darling. Stand up. Come very, very quickly because there's no, we're not going anywhere. If you have not submitted the life yet to God, no clapping. Thank you. Please you, Lord. Glory. I'm waiting for you. This is the most important part now. It's not I did it before. Are you crystal clear? Sure. Ah, it's not something you play with. I need the chorus. All I want. Thank you. I'm going to be praying with you. I'm going to allow two more minutes for those coming from the overflow. Saying this life must glorify you. Are you sure? Can we move it quickly? Thirty seconds more. going to hand you over to Dr. Ayo and Dr. Shil, but I'm going to pray with you. You want me to pray with you? Ha. Hey! Anybody who looks at you, this is the least they will ever see you be. Oh no, it's the least. What are you afraid of? Everything that makes you afraid today, you see no more forever. You see no more forever. You are so afraid of failure. Why? The Bible says underneath are the everlasting arms. You've taken the best decision. Hand over to him. In the name of Jesus. I like that it's young people mostly. Every force that is contending for your life, for your destiny, this hour gives way. Amen. I cast out every foreigner. Christ has not given you the spirit of fear, but that of love, that of strength, that of a sound mind. Father said this one's apart. Strength. You came out with it. Strength. Strength. Let strength. Oh, this young lady came early. Answer her early, Lord God. Yes. She is so determined for all of God. She really is determined. You can't see it. I can see it. Thank you, Lord. the blood of Jesus over these precious ones, God. At your coming, find them standing. Amen. If you do not tarry. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hello everyone. My name is Leabu Amtimkulu and I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa. And I'm so proud to be part of the awesome tribe representing the awesome leaders, Southern and Eastern Africa, AKA the A-Team. 
and being mentored by Ms. Adenowa for this past few years, serving in the ATF has so enhanced my work with God. And I can say I'm a better kingdom citizen right now because of Mrs. A's mentorship. And many of you may be asking, what next? Well, that's why I'm here. Next up is SALT. And SALT is a closed door mentorship session with Mrs. A. And to learn more about SALT, you can go ahead and scan the SALT QR code on the screen. And to learn about this great and awesome closed door sessions that Mrs. A has. And don't just take my word for it. You can ask any of the SALT ambassadors who have a badge on uh, that says, ask me about SALT. They will tell you more about SALT. And me just to give you a glimpse, you know, it is those closed door mentorship sessions that you have that Mrs. A teaches you the word step by step, precept upon precept, and she makes sure that she drills the word in you. And that coming out of those closed door sessions, you are an effective king and priest, and you get to go and apply those information and knowledge in your world and affecting your world for the better. Next up is the books. And to deepen your understanding about the mandate as a king and priest, you have to get those books. Don't leave without picking one of the books by the book stand. And you can ask any one of the ushers to direct you to the book stand. And please grab a copy and also grab for someone else. It will really help you and help that next person. What next? The awesome tribe is a global tribe. After all London comes all Abuja on the 20th of January, 2024. And thereafter, we'll go, we've got all Joburg on the 20th of April, 2024. And right after that, we'll have all Wisden on the 25th of May, 2024. Those are the announcements, everybody. Please do enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you.